Hi, I'm Dave Prouse. Let's configure our Kia DHCP server and connect to it from a client. After you've installed Kia DHCP, you can find the built-in configuration file within slash etc slash Kia. If we take a look inside there, you'll see the single configuration file, kia-dhcp4.conf. Let's take a look at that file now. This is a very large file. It's less configuration and more information about how Kia works. So lots of comments here. Now, in order to have your DHCP server work, you have to set up an interface. And there is nothing set up yet. So there's no network interface listening for DHCP requests. That's the first thing we have to do. And then in addition to that, we need to configure our IP subnet and an IP range or pool of IP addresses. By default, Kia uses 192.0.2 as the network number. Chances are you are going to be using something different on your network. If you're doing this in a NAT-based virtualization network, it'll definitely be different. If you're doing this on a LAN, it'll be different. So this is kind of their test IP network. And there's lots of information here telling you how to configure and what you can configure, routers, hardware address reservations, and so on. So this is a huge file, but I've trimmed this down into a small configuration file that has some of the basics. So let's get out of here and let's rename this as a backup file. I'm going to rename it with the MV command and just put an underscore in the front. Okay, this way it's there as a backup, but I'm gonna grab a file that I've already created and uh, that's in the documentation. And so you can use that as well, but uh, I'm gonna grab that now. Let's go back to the root and take a look. And here's the file I've created, kia-dhcp4.conf. So I'm gonna copy that over. So we'll do a cp, kia-dhcp4.conf and copy that over to slash etc slash Kia. Okay, that's done, and there it is. Okay, this configuration file is based off of using version 1.7 of Kia, but it should work on uh, previous versions as well. So let's take a look at the configuration file that I've provided here. We'll do a vim kia-dhcp4.conf and press enter. Okay, so I've got a bunch of interface, uh, a bunch of configuration information here, including the interface, the subnet, the pool, the router or gateway we wanna use, and the DNS server. Now, I'm gonna escape out of here for a moment. Let's take a look at my IP configuration. The network I'm on is 172.21. That is my network number. And the IP address of this computer is 172.21.0.211. So whatever your IP address is, you wanna make note of it and you wanna know what network number you're using. You also wanna know what the name of your adapter is. So for me, it's ENP1S0 and I'm jotting that down now that's the network adapter that this virtual machine is using. We have to specify that within the configuration file. Yours may be different. It could be EN01 or it could be ENP3F0 or who knows. So whatever that is, jot that down so that you can apply that into the configuration file. I already have the correct name, ENP1S0, and that's what I'm gonna use. But this is where you would go to modify it if you had to within the quotes. So again, if you had something like EN01 or whatever, you would change it here. I'm gonna leave mine as ENP1S0. And then the you'll see the lease timeouts. These are standard lease timeouts counted in seconds. You can change those 
however you wish. And then we see the subnet that we're on. Really, it's just a network for me. It's 172.21.0.0 network. The slash 16 tells me that it's a 255.255.0.0 subnet mask. So it's not really a subnet, it's just a network, but it'll always be called subnet. That is the network I'm using. If you're doing something different, if you're working within, say, VMware Workstation, it could be 192.168.80.0 slash 24. So whatever it is, make sure you're putting in the correct IP network number. I'm going to change mine back to 172.21.0.0 slash 16. And then I'm going to create a pool of addresses. This is just an example here. I don't want that. I'm going to change it a little bit to 172.21.50.1 because I can use anything for the third octet. And I'm going to say 50.254. But yours could be different. Yours, you know, you might put in, let's again say if you're using VMware Workstation, you might use something like 192.168.80. And use part of the range, for example. Maybe you'll do something like 50 through 192.168.80.149. As long as it's within your IP range, and as long as those IP addresses are not being used, and as long as you don't have a conflict with another DHCP server, you should be good. So I'm going to change mine back, and you got to make sure you keep those quotes in there. So 172.21. What did I say? 50.1 through 172.21.50.254. There is my IP range or scope or pool of IP addresses. Then we have to specify what the router is. That's your gateway address, right? So for me, my gateway is 172.21.0.1. Now I'm actually doing this in bridged mode. So my virtual machines are right on the LAN. And I do that so that I can connect easily to different virtual machines that are on different computers. But yours is most likely going to be NAT. So if you're working with VMware Workstation, it might be 192.168.80.1 or .2. Or if you're working in uh, VirtualBox, it might be 10.0.2.1. So whatever that gateway address is that the virtual machines normally use, that's what we want to make use of here. So I'm changing mine to 172.21.0.1. Then we have DNS. What is the domain name server? If you haven't set one up, then it's most likely going to be the same address as your gateway. And that's the case for me. I'm using 172.21.0.1. And that's it. That's all we're configuring for now. You can do all kinds of configurations for loggers and for you can connect to external databases. And then, as we mentioned, you can add reservations for IP addresses. We could also add searching for domains and so on and so on and so on. But this is just a basic configuration file uh, built with JSON uh, markup. And so feel free to use that and make configurations on your systems. So I'm going to save my configuration now. We're going to restart that DHCP server. So I'll clear the screen here. And we'll do a system CTL. Restart. ISC-KIA-DHCP4-Server. No news yet, which is good. Now I'm going to up arrow so we can change restart to status and see how it's going. OK, it's active. It is running. Let's do this with a pipe less so we can see a little bit more information. OK, and if we look here, we have the subnet. OK, and if we look down a little further here, we'll see that indeed Kia has started 1.7.8. And it is listening, so we should be in good shape now. Oh, and finally, I didn't mention it is listening on interface ENP1S0. So you can check that as well. If you get any red messages, 
Um, if we do this without the pipe less, if you do as a system CTL and check the status and you get something red, well then your error message should be here. Or you might get yellow where there's a warning. And for additional information, you can also uh, check the journal. We could do a journal CTL uh, dash U ISC Kia dash DHCP four dash server and get all the information within the journal and everything that's happened so far. Shutdown, startups, uh, restarts, and so on. We can also see uh, ports that are opened by running a SS command with a dash TULW. I'm showing this in text in uh, alphabetical, showing you the port boot PS is what it's called, but the inbound port is 67 for DHCP. That's an inbound UDP port. So we can see that with the SS-TULWN command. That's locally open on this guy, so he is listening. You can also see 22 is open, listening for SSH. I'm SSH'd in right now, of course, from my main system. So that is all set up. And at this point, we should be able to get clients to connect and grab the IP address. Um, and other IP information. Now, if you are running this as NAT on your virtualization platform, you'll have to turn off virtualization within that uh, program, whether it's VirtualBox or VMware Workstation or whatever. And I have a video for that uh, elsewhere on my website uh, showing you how to do that. If you're doing this in bridged mode the way I am, then you would have to shut down your DHCP server on the LAN and I have already done that so that there's no conflict. All right, so this guy is ready to go and now I'm gonna bring up a client and I'm gonna bring up this dev client that I've just created and start it up. I'm gonna work locally within KVM at this client for now just because I don't know what IP it has or what it's going to get. There we go. Let's go to full screen here. And we'll log in. Now, by default, when you install Linux clients like this, this is Debian with GUI. Uh, when you install these, by default, they're set up as DHCP. And they should get an IP automatically from a DHCP server. So let's check the IP with an NMCLI and take a look. Okay, it has received an IP address from the DHCP server. It got 172.21.50.1. So it's good, it's grabbing the first IP from that IP pool from the DHCP server. It also obtained the DNS server, 172.21.0.1. We can't see from here if it got the correct gateway address, but we can do that with an IP route show to see the default gateway address or router, which is here. And if these ever change, if you change your gateway or if you change your DNS server, you would just have to update that in the DHCP server within that Kia configuration file, and then all the clients would get that TCP IP information automatically. But this guy has received the IP address automatically. So that is it, he is ready to go. And one test you'd wanna do is ping a website on the internet to make sure that you can get to the internet and get out past your gateway and resolve domains to IP addresses. That's some of the main work of the DHCP server to hand off that TCP IP configuration information to the client so that it knows its IP address, the subnet it's on, any routes and the gateway and the DNS server. All right, so that's a little bit of basic configuration of the Kia DHCP for server and connection from a Linux client. And that's it for this video.